Still, there are those who say if ransoms help free an innocent person, they should be paid. Douglas Smith does not agree. He's a former assistant secretary at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and he helped the family of Jim Foley in their talks with the U.S. government. Take a listen. I think the short answer is to pay them is to then fund even more of these attacks to happen. When it happens, it's tragic. Do we want them back? Absolutely. But what we've seen is if you pay these terrorists, they're going to use that money to not take one person, but maybe 10, 15, fund a bombing that maybe kills 1,000 people. So while it's a tragedy, when it happens, you just can't pay into it. What about those who say paying ransom could save my son or daughter who's in captivity? I think that's the tough thing. And overall, we need to look at the overall national security implications of it. And while it is beyond horrific and tragic, and I worked on the Foley case, it is terrible when this happens. To pay for one is going to cost the lives of many, many more. So tell us about the Foley case. What, what did you experience? What was it like for the family? What did they go through the ordeal and then their dealings with the State Department? You know, I think the interesting thing, you've seen this this week, uh, the president's rolled out, is that behind the scenes, the government was really, really good at tracking intel, trying to figure out where he was, doing all the things they needed to do. But while there's an ombudsman for the IRS, there's an ombudsman for the Department of Labor, there isn't an ombudsman for a hostage. And I think they've learned from that. But it is a catch-22, because while you desperately want to share with the family, you don't want to share too much, because if you share too much, and then the people who are holding the hostages find out what you've been up to, it will make it that much more difficult to try to rescue them. What about individual families dealing with this horrible ordeal? Do you think at least they should be allowed to do whatever it takes to win their loved one's release, including ransom? My personal belief is no. Uh, you know, call me if my kid is kidnapped and maybe I change my tune. But I do think that at looking at all the evidence, when during the height of the Irish insurrection, when the, when the British were dealing with Northern Ireland, troops would get kidnapped and people would get kidnapped and they wouldn't pay. And tragically, they didn't get them back. They were killed. But they made a decision that to pay for just one would open the floodgates. And I think that's the thing we have to contend with. What are your thoughts on prisoner swaps? I think that's another interesting challenge. And, you know, the Israelis have been dealing with this for years. I mean, and they'll, challenge, they'll take one soldier and hand back 100. Uh, it's slightly different when there are soldiers involved, and that's versus private citizens. But even then, it gets very, very challenging. And that happened in the Bo Bergdahl yes. case. Uh, so let's talk about European countries. Many of them publicly won't say it. but. I think they've been actively involved in paying ransom. And a lot of times, the money ends up back in the, you know, in the hands of the bad guys who continue to do terrible things. And what kind of precedent does that set for countries who don't pay the ransom? It makes it hard for them, doesn't it? It makes it hard, but at the same time, they see what that money is going towards. And so there are some well-known European countries that have paid millions and millions of dollars in these ransoms. But what that money goes towards is financing more kidnappings, more bombings, and to, to keep to do it just keeps it going along. You know, ISIS views this as a, a source of revenue. I mean, much like if you were selling a product, this is their product, kidnapping. And the more people they kidnap and the more money they get paid, the more mayhem they can do. Doug, is it realistic to believe and think years down the road if none of these countries paid ransom to gain the release of their hostages, that the hostage taking would stop? No, I think it probably would continue, but I think they'd have a lot less incentive if they knew they were getting nothing for it. Douglas Smith, thank you so much. Thank you.